in this video I'm going to continue discussing quantum scattering theory and in this one we'll be looking at uh, phase shifts here. And so remember what we're thinking about is we have a potential here so it's a potential centered around you know some thing up the center of the potential and we are essentially firing particles at it and they will uh, bounce off of it you know they will be scattered from it and uh, what we have been looking at here is we have our incident wave which is the uh, particle sort of moving towards the potential and then we have our reflected particle which is what is coming off of it like that and so the amplitudes have to be the same for this so we're you know I, I call it a particle here but uh, we know that in quantum mechanics particles are waves and so we do have uh, th these are waves coming at our potential and they will uh, hit the potential or interact with the potential and then they will come off of it like that uh, and in fact what we have seen so far is that they actually come off of it as uh, as waves as uh, spherical waves so it'll be something that looks more like this coming off of it where they're moving in all directions off of it but if we think about this uh, in the one-dimensional case for a minute uh, we know that the amplitudes have to be the same because of the conservation of probability and so we have our incident wave and our reflected wave here and so we have to have that the amplitudes of these are the same uh, but we can have that the phases change and so that's kind of what we're looking at over here on the right so we have our incident particle or wave here and it comes in and say we have a potential right here so on this side the potential is zero and on this side it's infinity so it hits our potential here and then it's reflected back this way so the amplitude uh, you know going from here up to here is the same on the green one as it is on the red one but we now have a phase shift and so in this case where we are at zero potential and then have a wall that's infinite potential the phase shift will actually be exactly 180 degrees and so this down here is uh, 180 degrees phase shifted from up there and uh, this down here is just showing the same thing but uh, at a different uh, point in the wave here so up here we're kind of at a crest then here is kind of in the middle but the, the point is that it's the, the same in either case. Uh, and so what we know from that then is that, uh, so right here we have zero except at V equals zero, which is what we have right here. Then it goes to infinity. Then we have that B is equal to negative A. So uh, we have up here sort of positive A amplitude. Down here will be negative, well, negative A amplitude down here and so the reflected wave will have a negative amplitude compared to the incident wave and so what that essentially does is so we have our uh, we have our wave function here this is the incident wave this is the reflected wave and so we have this negative sign here in the exponent because that is a 180 degree uh, change in the uh, in the phase for it and so then our wave function will be equal to this if we just factor out that a there so we have this for the incident and this for the reflected so we have this phase shift 180 degrees here uh, and so what we have then if uh, if this is not equal to zero everywhere except for at the uh, sort of at the origin here then we have this phase shift going on right here so we have this phase shift uh, this uh, phase factor here and so some things to notice about it 
is that we have a two up here. And so the two up here is because our incident wave comes in. So it's coming in here. It's interacting with, uh, you know, all the potential here, whatever shape we want our potential to be when it comes in, then it's reflected to come back this way. It, again has to interact with all of this potential here and so uh, it's essentially interacting twice with the potential there and so yeah we have our uh, i e to the i k x is the incoming this is the outgoing with this phase shift here so the phase shift this delta uh, here is a function of k which is uh therefore a function of the energy since our k is equal to this uh 2me where uh, we have the energy rate here and so yeah like i said the two here is because of the phase shift uh when incoming and again when outgoing so the particle interacts with the potential twice once in each direction as we saw up here all right so uh, again, we so if we go to three dimensions here, so th this is looking at it in one dimension up here. Now we want to look at it in three dimensions. So we have our Rayleigh's formula for the incoming wave. So our e to the i k z is equal to this summation. So this uh, superposition of all these different angular momenta here. So that means that our lth partial wave is this right here, where each partial wave with angular momentum L will scatter independently. So they will have their own scattering occurring. And so remember, we have the, the Hunkel functions here of the first kind and second kind here. Uh, so we can combine these together right here like this. Uh, so we have to have this factor of one half. Now we have this negative I uh, N L and this plus I N L. So those cancel each other out. So we end up with this. Uh, then we have our Honkel functions here, which will end up being these two functions right here. So we have our positive uh, exponent, exponent there and our negative exponent right there. Uh, and so we end up with this right here. So uh, this is our uh, this is our Bessel function right there. And so we have that uh, our the elth wave function here is equal to this. And so this becomes uh, after we put this into our uh, into our wave function solution. So we're putting it in here in these uh, square brackets, uh, though I've already factored out the uh, the uh, 2R, or yeah, the 2R there. So this X is becoming an R here because we're working in spherical coordinates. And so after we do some math here, so uh, there's quite a few steps here. So we end up with this down here. So this is what we end up with after doing a bunch of math that you can look through on your own if you would like. But this is the the elth wave function here now. And so what we see is we have this e to the i k r minus this negative one to the elth power and then e to the negative i k r. And so what we see here is that the second term is the uh, the elth incoming spherical wave and the first term is the elth outgoing uh, wave uh, that's phase shifted by 180 degrees. Uh, and so a note here is that in the 1D uh, we had the in, the incident wave was the one with the positive exponent and the outgoing was the one with the negative uh, exponent. But that was because we were looking at uh, at something like this where we have our negative our negative a and then zero and we were looking at it going this way. Whereas uh, in the spherical coordinates we have our uh, you know, our uh, potential center right there. And in all directions, uh, R is is increasing. So it's, it's positive R. And so uh, we're essentially moving from positive towards zero rather than from negative towards zero. And so the, uh, the negative and positive in the exponents will be switched around for that. Uh, and so that's why we see that there. 
All right, so when our potential is not equal to zero, we have to add the phase shift to the outgoing particle. And so that's why we are uh, putting this in here now. So we have this phase shift there. And so the solution from our partial wave analysis uh, was this so from the previous video. So this does not have that uh, phase shift factor. Uh, and we do have this, which was that partial wave amplitude. Uh, and so this, uh, this right here was the scattered wave. So this was our scattered wave right there. All right, so we can then equate them since they are both equal to the elth wave function here. So we get this right here, which is them being equated here. So we can cancel out like terms on both sides to get this. Then we can cancel out this 2L plus 1 over R and this E to the IKR, which shows up in every term here. So we end up getting this. So then when we do some uh, algebraic manipulation, we end up with this right here. So this was our partial wave amplitude right here. And this is our phase, uh, our phase factor right there. Uh, and so we can use these uh, right here. So this is e to the 2i delta k, and that's just equal to this uh, e to the i delta k multiplied by itself. And 1 is equal to this e to the i delta k times e to the negative i delta k. And so we can end up with this right here. We factor out our 1 over k e to the i delta k here. Uh, and we end up with this, where this thing in square brackets uh, is just the trig identity here. So it's just equal to the uh, sine of the delta k there. And so again, we have this, the partial wave amplitude. And so we see that the partial wave amplitude is related to the phase shift uh, this way. And so if you recall from the last video, our scattering factor in terms of the partial wave amplitudes was this. So this is our uh, F of theta here. Uh, and that the total cross section that we got in the previous video was this right here. So our sigma was equal to this summation right here. Uh, so now we can substitute this uh, for the uh, partial wave amplitudes here. We can put this in here, uh, which is the uh, which is dependent on this phase change right here to get for our scattering factor f of theta and our total cross section these right here. And so uh, these are just equivalent to what we found in the previous video using the partial wave amplitude. But uh, the reason that we want to do this is that it's easier to calculate these uh, phase changes than it is to calculate those uh, partial wave amplitudes. And so uh, the reason to do this is mostly just to simplify the math. And uh, I think, you know, it's just sort of physically easier to understand a phase shift as well. Uh, so just sort of intuitively thinking about it, a phase shift is easier to understand than this, like, partial wave amplitude thing, which uh, is, you know, just kind of, it's, it's a bit more abstract and difficult to think of intuitively. Uh, but anyway, that was it for this video. The main takeaway here just being that we can uh, think of this, uh, the, the partial wave amplitude being equivalent to this, uh, this change in phase here. So when we have this scattering occurring, we are just changing the phase of our wave, of our incoming wave. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.